one after February 11, 1984, when the first shuttle touched down at KSC Shuttle Landing Facility, one of the world's longest runways. Since then, primarily weather has kept returning shuttles from making the round trip directly to KSC, since landing here saves both time and money. But no matter which landing site is used, KSC's skilled crews are on call to handle the returning orbiter. Landing and launches are the most visibly recognizable shuttle events at KSC, drawing live coverage by news media from across the country and around the world. Permanent facilities for the major networks and news organizations are part of the Launch Complex 39 press site area, where reporters monitor the huge countdown clock. Leading up to each mission, flight hardware is prepared at Kennedy Space Center. Astronauts practice and train while staying in the crew quarters of the operations and checkout building. Launch dress rehearsals are staged that include practice emergency escape plans at the pad. Between missions, the fleet of orbiters and other flight hardware are constantly undergoing processing by KSC's one-of-a-kind workforce. After the first two minutes of the shuttle's climb toward space, the two reusable solid rocket boosters separate from the external tank and parachute back toward Earth for a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. Divers aboard two special ships, known as Liberty Star and Freedom Star, retrieve the boosters. The ships tow them back by way of Port Canaveral, so the refurbishing process can begin in Hangar AF at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Even the parachutes are recovered from the ocean using large...